What's up, guys? It's Mickey, and welcome back to another episode of Blank Canvas. So how is my BK fam feeling? Because I feel like for the last two to three weeks, I hadn't asked y'all that. You know, it's been woe is me and we're done with that. Sad Girl City is done for now. Like we may have our moments of like where we drive by and we're like, are we going to enter the city? Er, hit the brakes, hit the brakes, put it in reverse. Beep, 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 beep. No, no Sad Girl City, no Sad Guy City. We're not going there. All right. Because you go there. Sometimes you can get stuck there and we're not trying to be there. So what's up, my BK fam? How have you guys been feeling? I hope you guys have been feeling great. Marvelous. As you can hear, your girl's been going through it. So I wanted to do back to back episodes. I finally, I don't feel 100% perfect and I don't want to seem like I'm trying to fake it to make it. I do not feel 100% perfect, but I am better than where I was. And if I have enough motivation to encourage you guys, uplift you guys. That's what the hell we're going to do, okay? Because life out here is hard for everybody and we're all just trying to make it. So that's what we're going to do. Last week, I broke down because sometimes we are taken away from the paths that we thought we were going to go or our direction has changed, but it's changed for a reason. But I also mentioned that I want to talk about limitations. And But in order to get to limitations, I wanted to guys give you some background information on it so it can make sense because a lot of people haven't read limitations it's not one of the popular stories to read in the bible and a lot of people haven't read their bible and it's okay that's what i'm here for to try to break it down as well that's not what i'm here for but that's what i'm here for today to try to break it down as much as possible and put it in simple terms to um explain it to people so limitations and who taught me about limitations honestly was pd pd pastor darius daniels on the episode that wasn't released before he had made an announcement that the church was growing and he had to change service times i said on that episode that I am praying for him to be like Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma and be able to move to one service time. That way he wouldn't have to work his body to death because I don't think people really understand when pastors are doing back-to-back services, that is working their body to death. That's working their voices to death. Like that's a lot. That's a lot on anybody. The worship team to have to get back up, even if you don't see them live for all five, the fact that they're doing multiple times, see that's their voices to be singing and praising and encouraging people and it's like I'm sorry but I understand why they change it up a little bit and why they tweak it a little bit because you imagine the people that has to be there for all the sermons and you're like I heard this I've been blessed by this I heard this I've been blessed by this we're good to go now like let's go eat so it's a lot for their team like the the volunteer people who let you in the church or whatever they're out there and whatever weather condition and they're trying to get people in get people to their seats uh if they have something in the lobby you have the lobby set up you got to do this for multiple rounds of people just so they can you know have the opportunity to be in the presence of god and be in the presence of preachers that they want to see which is important and which is why people do the work but i know that episode was never released and i don't know if it ever will be but i don't know if it was re- i know it wasn't released at that time so i wanted to acknowledge it on this episode since i know this one will be going out and i also just wanted to say guys that if you are part of my BK family and you believe in God and if you have been blessed by any of the because I link sermons did not let me also mention that I link sermons in the episode description my OG writers y'all know that I if I say I'm gonna link a video it's there unless I just forgot and then I have sermons of the week every week so sermons of the week are every week and then sometimes I do a podcast spotlight so you never know like maybe I'm listening to your podcast and I liked it and I shared it without mentioning it on the episode you know because y'all need to be discovered too i want as many ears to listen and as many eyes to bless all of us because there's enough room for all of us that's just how i feel so don't forget to check out the sermons of the week that's what it's here for to get everybody more exposure even if it's a small business to get that small business more exposure and most importantly just resources to have resources to either back up what i was saying in the episode or just give you resources for like hope and different things so yeah if you are part of the bk fam i want you guys and you believe in God, please pray for PD, Pastor Darius Daniels from, and he's a doctor. I really should say Dr. Darius Daniels because as Pastor Mike from TC would say, he has more degrees than at the month. He puts all of them. Every single one has one of them. He puts them to good use. I've explained and shouted him out so many times on this podcast. The way he breaks down a Bible and the background of it is 
amazing. So I want you guys to pray that they can move to one service. Um, he currently preaches live in Atlanta. I know sometimes he'll go back to New Jersey. New Jersey was the home thing. Follow along, ladies and gentlemen, multiple locations, multiple services. The man is out here doing God's work and it ain't just on Sunday. A multitude of different things. This man is out here working and grinding and we need him to be able to do it at his highest calling and highest capacity, which means we need him to not be overly exerted and tired and exhausted and he still is a husband and a father and they deserve the highest form of him too and not a depleted version after the church has gotten to him after the world has gotten to him after business has gotten to him they deserve the best version of him before even we do we're uh, let's say a prayer for that i'm not gonna say it right here online i'm just saying if you believe in god and if you want to say a prayer please do that if you have been changed by Change Church at all um, and you're looking for a place to do your tithes, do that because I know that can help with them trying to find a bigger space, uh, like a stadium or some, an arena. It is possible. We sell it out for rock shows. It's possible to sell it out for Jesus. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So rock shows, all kind of music shows. What I'm talking about rock. I mean, hello, all kinds of music. Y'all probably like, why is she going so hard for PD? That man literally changed my life and changed the way that I approach God. Okay. So he needs everything and then some because he pours his all into all of us so yeah shout out to pd shout out to change church and if you're looking for a church to go to in it i don't know exactly where it's located in atlanta i don't live in georgia okay i am global online so if you're there in atlanta and you're looking for a really good church check out change church google it find it may take you a minute to get there i've had a couple of episodes of talking to you guys back to back you know, usually y'all hear the transition music and all that. I've had a couple episodes of just being 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes of y'all just hearing me talk, 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 talk. Not that I'm not saying great stuff, because I mean, I am. But at the same time, I wanted to put a space in here for some transition music to prep you guys. So you guys ready to dive into Lamentations? All right, let's do it. So Lamentations, as I told you, was like a book about sorrow. And the way my chicken suit for the soul describes it, the first paragraph says, and this is like the introduction, this isn't in Lamentations, this is the chicken suit for the soul Bible breaking down, which is why I highly encourage everybody to get a Bible that will literally give you background information, give you an introduction, give you maybe uh, stuff in the back of like looking up and it's just easier also don't feel like you need to read the shakespeare version of jesus put the king james down if you can't understand it go get a children's bible i don't care if you're an adult go get a children's bible start there it'll break it down you can read it you'll have the basics then you can go up and up and up i still don't read king james version to this day i like amp i like nlt I think I like NIV, you know, people are always so mad. There are so many translations because there are multiple two languages, but also we need help. What, I, there has been so many times where I have read a scripture and I'm like, ooh, okay. And then I got read it in another one. I'm like, oh, that's the same thing, but it hit so much harder when you said it that way. It blessed me so much better. So pick a, pick a version that you like and don't be ashamed if you're an adult that needs to read a children's Bible. That's what you should do. That's what they're there for. I literally have a, I think it's like a teen Bible that I literally will reference and go back to. That's how I learned about the rainbows. Like that wasn't just sent up in my adult Bible. You know why? Because the adult Bible got so much of scripture and every single thing that they don't even tell you like the simple joys, like that they, they'll break down for children. That's how I learned about the rainbows, about God promised to never flood the earth like he did during Noah's time ever again. That's what that rainbow represents, right? I can't get that from my adult Bible. I needed my, my teenage and my childlike Bible. So it's about balance. Have both, okay? And don't be ashamed. Don't don't be ashamed. And find whichever version you like. Translation version. Sometimes you may have a multitude of it. Get multiple Bibles in your favorite versions. Have them all. What, what's what's going to go wrong with you having multiple Bibles? Nothing. Okay, that's what I thought. Getting into limitations. All right, so this is the introduction. Again, this isn't me reading scripture um this helps paint the picture of the background they said picture hope as a shiny red balloon when jerusalem was destroyed the balloon of hope burst by the time limitations was written hope had been shattered into bits and pieces limitations is a book born of utter grief and devastating loss and you know for the past couple of weeks i've been kind of i've been grieving i've been grieving some stuff i've been mourning some stuff and so i thought limitations would be a good example also, I also want to let you guys know before we get into it 
that this is also explains how Limitations is a series of sad poems. And oh, this is so sad. It says the kind you write when you feel so bad that there's not much to do but sing the blues. And the prophet Jeremiah wrote these poems. When Jeremiah wrote these poems, his nation had just been taken over by the Babylonians. His people were either captives in exile in Babylonia or running or running for their lives toward Egypt. Jeremiah wrote to offer hope and to encourage his people to turn back to God. He believed that the fall of the nation of Judah had occurred specifically because the Jewish people had turned away from God. He wrote that the destruction of the people in their land was consequences of their actions. And I broke down in the last last week's episode, but I'll do it in this one too. Destruction is number one, uh, the first poem. God's anger is number two, the uh, second poem. Mercy is the third poem. Fourth poem is effects of destruction. And then the fifth poem is restoration. So the one that I remember that I said I wanted to break down was three, which is mercy. And before I read three, I want to give you a little background. So for the third poem, they have mercy in here. And it says, while th this is background, while this third poem communicated the people's misery in very personal terms, it was here that Jeremiah connected with God's nature. While it was true that the Jews had refused to follow God and thus had declined as a political power, it was also true that the same God who promised them prosperity if they would obey was still in control. God remains the same. So now we're going to scripture. This is chapter three, but in this book of Lamentations, it's the third poem, again, written by Jeremiah. Our little subheading that they have. Oh God, I love the chicken soup for the soul bottle soul bible because they even break it down into subheadings and stuff so the subheading that we have for the third poem is hope in the lord's faithfulness are we ready here we go i am the one who has seen the afflictions that come from the rod of the lord's anger he has brought me into deep darkness shutting out all light he has turned against me day and night his hand is heavy upon me he has made my skin and flesh grow old. He has broken my bones. He has attacked me and surrounded me with anguish and distress. He has buried me in a dark place like a person long dead. He has wallowed me in and I cannot escape. He has bound me in heavy chains and though I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayers. He has blocked my path with a high stone wall. He has twisted the road before me with many detours. He hit like a bear or a lion waiting to attack me. He dragged me off the path and tore me with his claws, leaving me helpless and desolate. He bent his bow and aimed it squarely at me. He shot his arrow deep into my heart. My own people laugh at me. All day long, they sing their mocking songs. He has filled me with bitterness. He has given me a cup of deep sorrow to drink. We've all been there, right? He has made me grind my teeth on the gravel. He has rolled me in the dust. Peace has been stripped away and I have forgotten what prosperity is. Woo, where's my highlighter? Because I don't have that highlighter. I need to highlight that. I have forgotten what prosperity is, right? Isn't that what I was kind of pause in the scripture this is me talking isn't that kind of how i've been describing the last couple of weeks not the week before that but you know two weeks prior isn't that how i was kind of describing myself like the poverty mindset or just feeling so off path and it was my mindset of like if i really trust that i am where i'm supposed to be i should have a more positive outlook on it but it's kind of hard to have a positive outlook on it when you're focused on everything that you didn't get didn't receive and everything that went wrong so there's that it's a lesson for me to make sure that I'm checking my perspective to not focus so heavy on the negative, but I have forgotten what prosperity is. I definitely feel like I can relate to that. I've been in such a season that feels like I was going backwards that I forgot what it feels like to win. And I had a lot of winning seasons. I know I talk a lot about the trauma, but I also had like a kind of lot of winning seasons that I think made me feel like, oh, okay, trauma is just a part of life. It's great. I'm going to win. Like, that's fine. But when you have consistent L after L and back to back, it can affect, it will affect your faith and it will affect your outlook on life. And that's why we have to be cautious of that and make sure that we check, how am I really viewing this season? What is this season trying to teach me? I've talked about this before. And just like, um, what am I labeling the season? And I was so focused on the negative that I couldn't, I know I was labeling nothing but negative, right? And so if that's what I'm labeling and that's how I'm seeing it, that also indicates how I'm going to serve the season 
and what kind of heart posture I'm going to have while I serve the season. And it also will like, the, will I be like the children of Israel? Like, am I delaying getting out of the wilderness because I have such a negative outlook and it feels like, oh my God, woe is me, right? And I'm not trying to be like them, turn 40 days into 40 years. Get me out. Lift me today, Lord, if you like. <laughs> get me out so going back to scripture we're now picking up at verse 18 he said i cry out my splendor is gone everything i had hoped for from the lord is lost i get that too i ain't gonna say my splendor is gone but everything in a sense i can say my splendor is gone but the other one that really hit my soul was everything i had hoped for from the lord is lost i would relate to that line more than i ever have in my life right? And when you don't have hope, hope is a part of faith. If you don't have hope, you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, how are you feeding God when his primary love language is, which is faith, right? If you don't have faith, how can you even, how can you even begin to see that living is worth it? How can you even begin to believe in things that are outside of your power and outside of your will? We need faith for a multitude of reasons, and those are just a few. Let's continue reading. We're picking up with verse 19. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies, we have been kept from complete destruction. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each day. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is wonderfully good to those who wait for him and seek him. So it is good to wait quietly, to wait quietly, to wait quietly. I just felt like I needed to say that over and over. To wait quietly. Somebody needed to hear that. All right. They know how the preachers be doing it. Somebody needed to hear that. <laughs> for salvation from the Lord. And it is good for the young to submit to the yoke of his discipline. Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demand. Let them lie face down in the dust, then at least there is hope for them. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them. Let them accept the insults of their enemies. For the Lord does not abandon anyone forever. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion according to the greatness of his unfailing love. For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. Verse 34. But the leaders of his people trample prisoners underfoot. They deprive people of their God-given rights in defiance of the Most High. They perverted justice in the courts. Do they think the Lord didn't see it? Can anything happen without the Lord's permission? Is it not the Most High who helps one and harms another? Then why should we, mere humans, complain when we are punished for our sins? Instead, let us... All right, y'all. Sorry I had to break that up. I don't remember the last verse that I was at. I was literally in the middle of recording, and then I had to stop it. So 37 says, can anything happen without the Lord's permission? It is not the most high who helps one and harms another. Then why should we mere humans complain when we are punished for our sins? Instead, let us test and examine our ways. They kept begging and asking for a king. This could be after judges. I think they had like individual judges and everything. It's a whole thing. And I don't want to mess up the timeline. I don't want to tell you guys wrong. But they asked for a king, right? So they got Saul. Saul did good and two. He didn't. And then God gave favor to David and was like, you'll replace him. Don't worry. Like his time is up. And then that's how we get David. And this is where we are. And that's how we get to the point of how long were you mourn? Because I've already chosen someone else. And I think we have to be careful because they should have been careful for what they asked for. Because I mean, they got a king. And then I'm sure some of them were not pleased with the king that Saul turned out to be. And also we have to be careful of letting our human emotions steer us from our God-given path. Learn from me. What did I say in last, was it last week or the week before last episode? And the rebellion in my rebellion against God episode was like the intrusive thoughts that I had about the devil talking to me. Like, why do I even have to fight you? You don't even believe in you anymore. You don't even believe in God's calling. I'm good on you. Like, this ain't even me no more. This is just, you are so grieved. You are such at a disdain for life and for people that my job is done, right? Like, even if I wanted to, it wouldn't be as enjoyous because your, your faith isn't there. Your strength isn't there stuff like that and i feel like that can happen too we have to be very careful of letting our human 
emotions in our flesh steer us away from God, steer us away from our path, and just keep us distracted and stuck. We don't want that either. So when he said, but I called on your name, Lord, from deep within the well, and you heard me, you listened to my pleading, you heard my weeping. Yes, you came at me. Yes, you came at my despairing cry and told me, do not fear. That reminds me of David talking to God. Like one minute he's like, curse the enemies, curse their families, curse the children, like all the above. And then the next he's crying out to God, God, if you hear my cries, I need you to come. And then maybe a song or two later, he is singing praises because God shows up. If I can leave anybody with anything from the most important lesson or one of the most magical and needed characteristics of God is his love and then he will show up for you he's got us even when we don't necessarily deserve for him to have our back he has us even when we go away from him he has us even in times when we brought it upon ourselves he has us he hasn't left us and he hears our tears so for people who feel like i am crying and crying and crying and it feels in vain it's not in vain there have been a multitude and these are men right these are men talking about crying so that should be i let me close the Bible right there because I get so sick of this society thinking like men crying or men showing emotion or men having EQ like is a bad thing. We all need a good amount of EQ, okay? Men and women. We do. We need it. And these men are out here crying to God like, God, I am crying, okay? So for the men who be like, I can't cry, it's weakness. Actually, back in the day, it was strength. Actually, sometimes, you know, that's a way to communicate to God. I don't have words. My tears, my tears are speaking for me. You know, my heart is breaking for me kind of thing. That is, that's a, that's a lesson and a blessing within itself. I'm going to leave it right there. Moving on. The other one that I wanted to talk to you guys about was restoration. This is poem five, restoration. Here's background information. So this is where we have found ourselves, dot, dot, dot. That was the message of Jeremiah's fifth poem. The Jews needed to accept their miserable state as slaves and captives. This poem closed with the truth that only God can restore their people to their homeland. Let's go to five. The subheading for five is prayer for restoration. All right, here we go. Ready? Poem five. Lord, remember everything that has happened to us. See all the sorrows we bear. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We are orphan and fatherless. Our mothers are widowed. We have to pay for water to drink, and even firewood is expensive. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are exhausted, but are given no rest. Haven't we been there before, y'all? Haven't we been there? Verse 6. We submit it to Egypt and Assyria, or Assyria, I don't know how to say that, to get enough. Oh, pause. And reading scripture, my thoughts. When you're reading the Bible and you be like, I can't say this name. I don't understand this. Say whichever way it makes you feel comfortable. Say the first letter of it and be like, "Mm, you know, God, like he knows these names. He ain't stressing. Do not let your ability or feeling like I can't pronounce this to stop you from doing it. Don't let that happen. Okay. Don't let that happen. You're good to go, y'all. You're good to go. Keep reading on. Don't let none, because some of them got some weird names. Some of these places got some weird names. But honestly, I feel like they would say the same thing about today's time. I ain't going to mention some of these names because I know it's some of y'all names. All right. Some people may look at my actual real name as funny. All right. But don't worry about me, honey. Don't worry about me. Royalty over here. I just wanted to do that little side note of don't let that stop you guys from reading. Skip over it. Like, say it. Even if you sound funny, we all have those moments. I know preachers who are so talented and even sometimes they say names and words and things differently. Okay. Did it diminish the message any? No. Say it. Move on. All right. It's not about getting the names right. It's about the word feeding your soul. Remember that and really understand God for who he is and not just who the world tells you who is and not who family tells you is. Knowing God for yourself. This is verse seven. It was our ancestors who sinned, but they died before the hand of judgment failed. Ooh, ooh, where's my highlighter? I always have a highlighter when I read the Bible and for the first time I don't have it. 
and I'm missing so many good parts. I'm going to have to go back and just highlight this myself. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear it? Run it back. Verse seven, it was our ancestors who sinned, but they died before the hand of judgment fell. So it's kind of like, you know, the kids being in Egypt, right? There were the adults, but there were also the babies. The children were the ones who got to enter the promised land. Their parents didn't because they delayed it. We serve a generational God, y'all. Everybody be out here thinking I can act a fool. I'm like, oh, so what? And then I can have babies. As if some of that judgment won't fall on them too, or they have to pay the price of you acting a fool. Even if you don't believe in God, just use it in regular everyday terms. Jesus, how many battles did our parents not fight? Did their parents not fight? Did their parents not fight? Did their parents not fight? Generation after generation after generation, and it bled on the next one. And it was up to the next one to handle their generation's problems and the previous generations. That's a word right there. I can really end right there. <laughs> so let's pick up with eight. Slaves have now become our masters. There is no one left to rescue us. We must hunt for food in the wilderness at the risk of our lives. Because of the famine, our skin has been blackened as though baked in the oven. Our enemies rape the women and the young girls in Jerusalem and throughout the towns of Judah. Our, pr our princes are being hanged by their thumbs and the old men are treated with contempt the young men are led away to work at millstones and the children stagger under heavy loads of wood the old men no longer sit in the city gates the young men no longer dance and sing the joy of our hearts have ended our dancing has turned to mourning the garlands have fallen from our hands disaster has fallen upon us because we have sinned our hearts are sick and weary and our eyes grow dim with tears for jerusalem is empty and desolate a place haunted by jackals but the lord you remain the same forever your throne continues from generation to generation why do you continue to forget us why have you forsaken us for so long that sound like david too but that's jeremiah speaking y'all Restore us, Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? And then that is where, let me make sure, let me turn the page. Yes, that is where our limitations end. Like, he's basically like, at this point, he's been, the whole book is about him grieving, right? And now we're just at this point of, like, him talking the same way David would talk to God and be like, God, have you forgotten me? And I feel like so many of us in our lives, we've had different points of, it's like, God, where you have forgotten me, do you hear my cry? Do you hear my plea? And it's like, of course I do. You know what I mean? Like, of course, of course I hear your cry. Of course I hear your plea. Nevertheless, though, life will bring you troubles. Sometimes we bring troubles upon ourselves. And he's going to come rescue us. It's never a question of if. <laughs> I think our biggest question, sometimes we have that question, but the next and the first and foremost biggest question is usually when. How easy is it for us to turn away from him? How easy is it for us to get mute? You have to honor and give space for grief. And that's what I was doing. I should be done grieving by now. That's how I feel. But grief comes in waves, as we all know. Losing a loved one isn't the only form of grief. How about grieving the way your life is gone? Grieving the way your life is going? Grieving that you're not where you thought you wanted to be or should be at this point in time? That's grief. Putting down something God told you to start. Grief. Having to, maybe you were blessed with the child that you prayed for, but it came with complications that you didn't expect. Grief. Grief comes in many forms. Even if it's a simple thing of, God, I fasted and I prayed and you told me to go to this job. Now you want me to quit or now they fired me? Grief. Thinking, God, I have this, this nice house. Um, my husband was providing. We were providing. We, we gave our children the life we never had. And now you've taken it all away? Grief. Grief comes from a magnitude of things, big or small. Grief. So I think we have to honor those spaces and give spaces for ourselves and time to grieve, but also at the same time, we also have to acknowledge that we can't stay stuck there, right? And sometimes in those grieving moments is when God will show up even faster. I'm not saying go cry your heart out or put yourself in situations that'll make you so sad and be that desperate for him in that way. Like he doesn't want us to suffer, but life will make us suffer. We'll bring suffering on ourselves. And sometimes we're dealing with battles that should have been fought for previous generations and you already know how i feel about that think about if you don't have the examples to fight them or think about how overwhelming you can feel to fight your own and then you're leaving that weight on your children and then they're raising children with your weight their weight like 
it will continue. Woo. Woo. Things to think about. I wanted to, the point of Lamentations is because I wanted to break it down in last week's episode, but I just didn't have the time. So I wanted to dedicate this time to break it down. I also want to continue to be very transparent with the journey or whatever. Like my life is in, I want to be careful with the label. It's a very refining, revealing season, but it's a necessity. I will know who can handle what when I do go into the next season. I will know this person does not do well under pressure. They're going to make me feel like shit. This person does does not do well under pressure. They're going to speak death when they should be speaking life. I will know this person can't handle me being like the darkness of me being sad and those kind of high levels of death. I can't go to them. It doesn't mean I don't love them. It doesn't mean that they can't come to me, but you have to go through these different seasons to learn who can handle you at this version of you. Who will still love you at this version of you? Who can point you back to God? Who can point you back to a place where your soul needs to heal? Who can do things of that nature? That's important to know. But you don't see who can handle what until you're put into different seasons, right? So that was my point of that. And I just wanted to pull out another example in the Bible of people have experienced these feelings, right? People have gone through these trials and tribulations, but it's not the end. And I hate to break it to you, but you know, all these people who God has caught up, maybe they had their own battles and stuff, but they don't stay down. They may have had moments of weakness of crying out, but they don't stay down. Even for Moses, who didn't get to cross over into the land, he still fulfilled his purpose. Now, he would have crossed over had he not struck the rock, listening to other people. Do not let the peer pressures of what everybody is saying cause you to go off from your path. And that's what scared me the most, to not be obedient in this season. I can listen to everybody else talking shit about me. I can listen to everybody else saying this and that. I can listen to the bipolarness of people. And I don't mean bipolar as as in a negative connotation, I should say, I can acknowledge the moodiness of people because I feel like human beings, they go up and down, they fluctuate, emotional creatures. That's what humans are, emotional creatures, right? And sometimes more often than not, people make decisions, make people make permanent decisions out of their emotions. They make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. That's what I try to warn all the people in my life. And I give that to you guys, my BK fam. Don't make permanent decisions off of temporary emotions. You'll feel the effects of that for a while. Also, just, how should I word this? Also, just be, you know, cautious of your mouth. If you have nothing nice to say, close it. Um, People don't always need the high level of nastiness that comes when people are grieving and it boils down to and i'm including this for myself it boils down to a personal problem right like that's on me (laughs) these other people didn't do this to me it's on me and i have to self-regulate myself and i need to check in on myself to get it together and it's not to say that other people can't help me like by making me by comforting me or by speaking life into me helping me see like you are speaking so negative you need to flip your perspective to even see it in a positive light they can help me do that but they shouldn't have to be verbally abused by me in order to see that so that is on me they shouldn't have to be verbally abused by me and then it's like okay but you know i love you right you know i love you i'm sorry i shouldn't put my you know i shouldn't put my people through that they if anything, they deserve for me to care enough to self-regulate myself for me to not talk ugly, even if I am in pain. It's just, it's really no excuse. It happens. It happens. I acknowledge that it happens, including for me. It happens, but it's not justifiable and it's really no excuse. And we all have to do better. And I'm including myself in that. So that was the point of limitations. I, again, I want to take you guys on this journey, but is an episode like a journey with me? And just to kind of know that walking in faith is hard. It is challenging. It is different. And sometimes do I still feel like this stuff that I'm doing is in vain? Absolutely. But even if it just helps one person to be like, okay, I don't want to kill myself. Or okay, Mickey got out of her dark days. And as we can hear, she was in a dark spot. She was in a dark place, but she's, there's a little light peeking in her we hear the little light in her voice and stuff again i want you guys to know that and like i said on the it's it's dead it's you know 
it's a dark and it's a brutal statement. But like I said on the if I'm not here episode, you know, even if I can't finish this fight, like I need you guys to know you can do this. And that's why it was important for me to be honest and raw about my emotions. But y'all know I'm gonna come back with some joy and some encouragement too. Like I can't just leave y'all out here feeling gloom and doom and thinking like, well, let's sit in sorrow. No, we gotta, we gotta get out of it. And we got to do better and be better too. So anyways, I love you guys. And I hope that this episode helps to help somebody, you know, or it just continues to help paint the bigger picture of where Mickey is right now in this point in time. Okay. So I love you guys. And I highly encourage anybody, if you're reading your Bible, don't let different words stop you from reading. Also, go wherever you're comfortable. It is not a race. You do not have to complete your Bible in a certain amount of time. You don't have to read the whole thing the first time you pick it up or the second or the 16th time. Get to know your Bible for you. (laughs) Just like get to know God for you. And please put the, unless you just love it, put the Shakespeare version down. All right. King James is great and marvelous. And it sounds cool. But if you just want simple clarity and understanding, there are so many other versions to help you understand. And then you can upgrade to King James if you like. But I know some people who come out of the womb wing King James and that's all they know. Well, that's good for y'all. God's favorites. How does it feel? <laughs> How does it feel? So that's what I want to leave you guys with. Just um, I want to let you guys know I'm getting better. I'm getting better. This isn't the end. And I just I'm grateful that I'm I'm getting better. So the best version of me can be out here to you guys and to others around me. And that's where we're ending. That's where we're ending. I hope my BK fan takes the time to do something that makes them smile, makes them happy, and then make somebody else smile too, if you can. If you can encourage somebody or just be like, I thought of you and I'm thinking of you, I hope you're doing well. Encourage somebody else. That's the goal for the week. I love you guys. I love you, my BK fam. And I can't wait to see what we're talking about next time. All right, guys.